all right, how's the Sunday going, people? I'm just uh, having a quiet one. Uh, my wee boy's Mazstein, fucking pff, murder. Um, which is all right, not women. Just look out for people in it, vulnerable people. Um, obviously, some of you might have seen. Um, so I, I I started then this volunteering. Um, that's um to help guys come into a prison with things like sorting out money matters, um medical stuff, housing, so it's kinda like things that I've experienced when I've come out of prison obviously. Cause you need to sort out a house, money, fucking all this the kind of stuff that you need to get on your feet basically so um we went to see this guy who had contacted this organization that i volunteered for him he was just kind of he seemed just curious about it and want to link up outside and all that and obviously you'll get people who are full of good intentions when they're in there and then when they go out it's fucking everything goes to shit you know what i mean but then you'll get people who are genuine you know what i mean it's just it's like the same with everything um, you're just going to get people who are um, ready to change and people who um, they are need, do you know what I mean? So um, I'm pretty, it felt weird getting into this prison. Now, this was the same prison where I started my 16 year sentence in 2004, but it was demolished and rebuilt into these super halls, they called them, right? But the old halls were much better. As anybody that's been in them will tell you, there was just this pure camaraderie and respect. Like, there wasn't a lot of violence for some reason. I think it was because a lot of people had, like, mutual respect. There were some people, obviously, you just stayed away from, do you know what I mean? But for the most part, it was all just decent guys for schemes and for this and that, you know what I mean? I know it's a, a long term prison as well, but. Um, there's always shifts in the kind of nature of the prisoners who are in there. Like sometimes you'll get a hall that's just pure tense and guys are walking about with fucking daggers because they think this guy's plotting this and that and they might not even be plotting it and it's just rather have one and no need it than need one and no have it. Not that kind of mentality, do you know what I mean? Them have been halls like that, guys stashing fucking daggers in cereal and all that and the Rice Krispies, you know what I mean? <laughs> Madness, man, but um, I just how do I put it? When I was in the when I was sitting in uh the the waiting room waiting to go into the agents, but I was like that to the guy I was with who who started this organization. I was like, I feel like I've never been in prison before, but it was just weird. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Probably the first time I've walked into a prison and left on the same day. You know what I mean. It was fucking weird, but hopefully they start a bigger and better things in that as well. Because obviously, when I got out of jail, I was all set and doing my PhD in fucking writing this and that, academic university stuff. But, and I do want to go back to it, 100%. But I feel like the new... Um, so when I apply for my PhD, I kind of fucked up my application on the bit where it's methodology, how you go to collect your data. No, that was the one part I had to get fucking brilliant and I messed it up. All the rest of the application was tip top. So kinda didn't I was like my professor was like me, he's like Chris man, they'll they'll rip you apart with that one bit and that's the bit you need to get right and I was like fuck it. So I didn't apply for it, but COVID did hurt. this was twenty twenty, so COVID fucked it anyway, so it wouldn't matter if I, I wrote a brilliant methodology section or no, I w I wasn't I wouldn't go it because COVID hurt and everything was shut and fucking this and that. Um, cause I was invited to a seminar at Glasgow Uni about prison rehabilitation, and I couldn't go because COVID. So, kind of fell away for the academic side of the now. Um, even though I wrote a paper that was published in Canada, the Journal of Prisoners and Prisons. Um, kind of really wasn't happy with the paper because it had been edited a bit, and, it, and when I was reading it, it didn't sound like me wrote it. So, but anyway, it still got published, and that's that. Um, but I feel like the new I'm in 
I'm collecting data by what I'm doing with podcasting and volunteering, talking to this guy and that guy. And I've got I've got a lot of good plans in my head. It's just it's early days and trying to get up and running. You know what I mean? So, uh Ah, it's 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 all it's all coming together now, you know what I mean? So it was twenty years ago in April that I got sentenced to sixteen years. It was actually the nineteenth of April two thousand and four, so that's twenty years ago, man. And it feels mad even saying that because at my sentencing the judge said something like it's doubtful that I'll ever be rehabilitated or uh, something like that. Uh, I think my own lawyer said something like that, I know, <laughs> your own fucking lawyer saying that's no good at your sentencing, um, so, and here I'm all, um, done it, done it in my own, know what I mean, so, fuck it, but don't expect a pat in the back for something I should have been doing all along, you know what I mean, try to be a good guy, but struggling with, listen man, I, I've get, I get bad thoughts in my head all the time, but, it's always going to be there, and and I don't believe that shit. Or you're rehabilitated. No, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe anybody who's been in jail that long could come out and no go back to that. So you're no rehabilitated. You're no back to the state you were in before. Um, you're just. You've got a leash on it now. You've got shit to lose. You're sick of going back. Whatever. You're sick of the. The process of the system just swallowing you up and shitting you you know what I mean it's fucking pish it's a fucking it's shite you know what I mean um, so that that's my take on it um, but um, I wanted to come on and talk about this this notorious case that was actually quite recent it's pretty upsetting to be honest um, and I remember it when it happened but I didn't, I didn't really put too much focus on it, cause it's a child. Um, this poor wee lassie, Alicia McPhail, she was only like primary two age, but wee lassie was born in two thousand and eleven. That was the same year my son was born, so she would be twelve then, now, grown thirteen, starting high school. Not a I mean. Um, poor wee lassie went to. Uh, stay with her grandparents in Rossi on the Isle of beautiful place. The last place you would expect a murder, let alone a child abduction and murder. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons it was so... I think it added to the notoriety of the case because it's like quite quiet and tranquil in the scenery. Um, but it just shows you that no matter what kind of community you're in, there's always going to be dark forces, people who have really, really dark, horrible thoughts, urges and impulses. Like, I'm not going to lie, right? We all have impulses and dark thoughts and all. Like, minds are just... I don't want to say they're simple, but they're kind of vanilla, like, fucking punching some arsehole in the face for shouting at an old woman behind a counter or something. That's just me, you know what I mean? I'm not going to sit and bullshit and make out everything's all fucking unicorns and rainbows. We all get them. Thoughts that are in your head. Intrusive thoughts that just come into your head in certain situations. Like, can I be triggered? But this is different. This is somebody who... It obviously, a 16 year old boy, right, abducted this wee lassie. So, what happened was this boy, Aaron Campbell, right, a 16 year old boy, high school student, um, had a party in his house for his, him and his pals, right, um, and he ended up after the party finished late at night, say back at 12, 1 o'clock, he phoned this uh, phone to purchase cannabis, right? Because he said he was feeling suicidal to one of his pals, right? The person that he phoned to buy the cannabis, I believe, was the stepmother of his victim because I believe that he had purchased cannabis off the victim's father in the past, right? Um, so he's phoning that phone 
back of one in the morning. Now I've bought fucking solid and green before. You don't phone fucking people at that time, know what I mean? That's for like fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but everybody's different. Maybe he'd go to it that time before or I don't know. But he's 16, he's no very mature. And um, he's, the, the boys clear, they say you can't diagnose a psychopath below, say, the age of like 21, 18, but this wee guy has all the the the, the hallmarks. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute. But um, he'd, he'd, he'd phoned to buy cannabis. He didn't get an answer. So what he did was armed himself with a kitchen knife and um, walked to the home of the individual who he had phoned to buy the cannabis for, right? So he entered the house, the door, the front door was unlocked, so it's because of the kind of community it is. I think well, it's one of the ones, leave your door on, we can leave our doors unlocked, nothing ever happens here. I think the biggest crime maybe was somebody fucking breaking into a shed and stealing the lawnmower or something, which is the kind of community you'd want to live in, if I'm honest. Um, and what he did was entered the bedroom of the wee lassie, Alicia, and basically lifted her out of bed and so abduction at this point. He's committed a child abduction. And what he did was um, he walked to basically this aban abandoned hotel and the, the town he was at and basically um, he's committed these horrendous horrendous sexual acts um, that I believe were just absolutely horrendous man um, for what I've heard uh, not really want to go too deep into it but the wee lassie had 117 separate injuries she had been raped um, vaginally and anally, um, there was tears, like, just absolutely horrendous, um, I believe there was injuries to the neck and the spinal cord, um, which would be indicative of being, like, fucking throttled, like, shook, like, so the anger and the rage that that must take to be able to kind of perpetrate that, and one of the, one of the things was that he'd said to psychologist after it he said um when i seen this wee lassie this six-year-old wee lassie all i could think about was killing her now how how does that kind of how does that kind of thought come about now i've had a lot of fucked up thoughts right but i've never once in my fucking life ever looked at a child and thought to myself i want to kill you um it's just fucking it's another level, it's like another planet of criminality in it. You just look at somebody like that and think, you have got no reason to be breathing, you have got no reason to be walking this earth. You're just a fucking demon and you need sorted. Um, so what happened was he'd went home, got changed, um, fucking flung away his own clothes, the wee lassie's clothes, the wee la there was a, so he went home, showered and all that, but his ma seen him leaving on CCTV and all that, right? Because the wee lassie was fun about six in the morning. Well, no, no, she wasn't fun at six in the morning. What happened was the grandpa got out of his bed for work and saw that she wasn't in. They searched the house, notified the cops. There's this big search over the island looking for a helicopter. fucking the, the works. And then what's happened is um, the woman who he messaged for the cannabis who saw the missed calls for him and text him back and says, what, what do you want? And he says, oh, it doesn't matter, and put laughing emojis, right? Hmm. And he's killed this wee lassie. And it's her stepdaughter who's missing. And um, he, she texts back and says, keep your eye out for Alicia, she's missing. And this scumbag texts back, oh, I'm sure she's no went far. This fucking rat, that's just pure the epitome of arrogance and psychopathy if I've ever seen it. How cool and calm and collected this wee guy was is actually pretty... I don't want to say worrying like it would worry me. Like, I would just smash his fucking teeth down his throat till my fist came out his arse. I wouldn't give a fuck if that offends him there and... <laughs> Why does it offend you? I don't care, man. There's just... 
you could hurt a child like that. That could have been my child. Obviously, I've not got a wee lassie, but it doesn't matter. Somebody can perpetrate that level of violence on a child. To me, is just fair game. Know that I'm saying I'm going to go out and do something. I'm not saying that. But there's a part of me that looks at him and just thinks, mm, you bring out my Dexter wee man. <laughs> know what I mean? Um, I've just got a strong sense of kind of protecting the weak and the vulnerable. Um, and sometimes I believe it's a higher purpose. It's it's something that's bigger than me. It's a principle. It's a moral to me. Do you know what I mean? Um, you protect people that are vulnerable and all that shit. So um, he would just be fucking sharp jumping me, man. I would just fucking feed him with the crocs. You know what I mean? Just absolute monster. And what I think it is... He obviously, like, I think, I don't know, right, but I think he might be an anger, excitation, rapist, somebody who is basically just loves seeing his victim being terrified, man. And this wee lassie was alive during some of this attack. Um, and to think that the horror and the pain this wee six-year-old lassie must have went through is just absolutely fucking mind-numbing. Um, I just couldn't imagine what their parents have gone through. It must just be a fucking nightmare that you just wish you're going to wake up for. But and I would and my heart goes up to them. Um, if any of them ever see this, my heart goes up to you. And I can't imagine what you're going through. Um, but I hope you can manage it day to day. Just get your. I know it sounds fucked up, but. Um, that's a six year old wee lassie with her whole life in front of him. This fucking sick wee rat bag has done that because he said he was texting people saying, I wa I've always wanted to experience a murder, like as if it was some existential fucking exercise that he wanted to. Like, say, like, taking fucking some drug, it's just going to give this outer body experience. Like, what kind of mentality is that to commit a murder because you want the experience, do you know what I mean? Um, and I believe that what he done was, he was on a Snapchat group, now this is creepy, he was on a Snapchat group while the wee, they were look, they had not been arrested yet, and he took a video of his cell looking in the mirror and put it on a Snapchat group and said, I found the guy who killed her, like, <laughs> and it was him, like, just playing the cat and mouse, like, haha, <laughs> you don't know I done this, like, it's like, I did date, but I didn't date, like, just, the wee guy reeks at absolute psychopathy and narcissism, I believe that when he was in the dock, he was just showing the emotion, listen to this, the wee fucking scumbag even gave evidence in his defence, right, and he was in the witness box giving evidence, and when he was being cross-examined, he claimed that it was the stepma who killed the wee lassie and um, said that he'd had sex with her and she was jealous of him. And <laughs> but that isn't it. What was that's just that that's just the height of arrogance, but and and cunning manipulativeness. But what it also what it also reeks is the calmness with which he delivered that evidence. Um I I don't know how how mm, that takes a, another level of just pure psychopathy man to be able to murder a six year old wee lassie, try and cover it up, stone in the witness box and give evidence and make up this fucking fantastical story about how it was in the year. And you're not even batting an eyelid, you're starting talking about it as if you got to the shop to buy a fucking tray of eggs and a fucking loaf of bread. There's just nothing there. Um, and the wee, the wee scumbag, Aaron Campbell, his name is, he was found guilty. Um, and I believe that the judge said it was doubtful he would ever be released because he was. I think he was making statements to a psychologist that he constantly fantasises about murdering children and having sex with corpses no I've always wondered because there's obviously other cases where 
In fact, this is a weird one, right? See Ted Bundy, you've all heard of him. See the very first murder he was suspected of was actually a very similar case to Aaron Campbell's case. Now, what happened was, this was the 1960s, this eight-year-old lassie, Anne-Marie Burr, B-U-R-R, -R, went missing out her house, like the same way Alicia was abducted out her bed. So, somebody had come into the house during the night, lifted her out of bed, and she was never seen again. Now, this wee lassie's dad was a piano teacher, and I believe he taught Ted Bundy piano for a brief period, and the house was actually on Ted Bundy's paper route. He was 14 at the time. Now, he strongly suspected of committing this murder, but he would never admit to it because it's a child seeing American jails. Even the screws will fucking stick their buttons up your ass. They don't give a fuck out there. The screws are like cons and all. So, under no circumstance was he ever going to admit to this murder, but everybody believes he done it, right? And I believe it too. And it was a very similar one to the one I'm talking about. Um, and what I also noticed was in Ted Bundy's later murders, the ones that, that have been confirmed, was actually him in on the house in the middle of the night and taking the victim for her bed, like bludgeoning her unconscious. And because they're adults, they're no six-year-old lassies, so they can put up a fight, fucking throw alarm cloaks off your dome, whatever, they can fight back. So he was just bludgeoning them while they were sleeping, taking them out, because he was a necrophiliac as well. He didn't like having sex with live victims. They had to be dead. And he was visiting the body dump sites and having sex with the corpses until they were too putrefied to touch, which a lot of people don't really know about the Ted Bundy case. He was actually a paedophile. Um, and that's what I laugh when I see, like, you know how women are. Oh, he's dead handsome. <laughs> Why is he? Fuck's sake. You'd be perfect for him. Don't get it at all. So I always wonder, was um, Aaron Campbell, if he hadn't been apprehended for Alicia McPhail's murder, would he have got the kind of taste for murder and would he have went on to target other children? It's, it's actually pretty spine tingling to think a 16 year old would be capable of that. Now I know I've done some mad things, right? I've done some mad things in my life, right? But as I say, this is another level of fucking nuttiness. This is just inexcusable, indefensible. There's just no, there's no dealing with this and see all this rehabilitation. We can talk to them in therapy. No, mate, no. Somebody who gets turned on by killing, by hurting people. So like try to ask a tiger not to hunt. Um, it's just, to them, it's just an anim animalistic urge that you're never going to get rid of. It's in them. It's probably biopsychosocial. Um, I believe Alan Campbell, I think he used to argue with his mum a lot, who's alcoholic. Now, a lot of us have been in households like that. Both my parents were drug addicts, but I didn't stay with my mum. Uh, well, I stayed with her for like a year and a half when I was 12, but I grew up running like, my family and there's like, people with alcohol issues, drug issues, but... It's never made me want to go out and hurt somebody. I, my dad died when I was 14 with drugs. That made me go out, but I was doing, like, gang fighting with, with, with people for other schemes who were doing the shit I was doing. I was not going out and fucking smashing old women or lead with baseball bats or whatever, thinking about ch abducting children. This is just... This is just a monster who should never see the fucking light of day. And the funny thing is, he got sentenced to 27 years and appealed it and it got reduced to 24 years, I think. So he'll be eligible for a pro in, I think, 2042. So he'll be about 40, so he'll be about roughly my age, right? But I wouldn't like to, There's some people, right, we've never given... I don't think we've ever gave somebody natural life in Scotland. I believe that Monin McCulloch... Robert Moan, who I've already done a video about, him and Tam McCulloch were sentenced to natural life because they committed, like, three murders and all that shit, but even Tam McCulloch got out, three murders, how do you get out? <laughs> and I do believe that there is some people in our prisons, they're, they're very few, but there is some, William Beggs being one of them, the limbs in the lock, this scumbag Aaron Campbell, there's just some people, and probably some you've never heard of, 
who should just never walk the fucking streets again. Um, and if they do, I hope some wee young team gets a hold of them and <laughs> delivers some fucking street justice, know what I mean? Because there's just, um, especially when there's no remorse, there's no, there's just no compassion, there's no, there's nothing out of these people, they're just stone cold psychopaths, it's like letting a fucking wild animal out of a cage, like why would you want a wild animal roaming the population, <laughs> you wouldn't, somebody's got to be staying next door to a scumbag, you know what I mean, Um, but uh, it was a shame for that wee lassie man, they had like a vigil for her and the, I think they had a memorial bench and they had a, they made a wee memorial garden in our primary school, like that's just dead, <laughs> makes me tear up a wee bit, you know what I mean, it's fucking, it's a pure shame, so, it's just, um, it's just good to try and remember the wee lassie, you know what I mean, because she had her whole fucking life ahead of her and some fucking predators just stole, stole it just to satisfy a fucking short term kick, you know what I mean, fucking, there's just no word that can describe it, Um, it's fucking horrendous, um, I can't imagine what, they, what that family and their parents went through with, with that case, you know what I mean, and one of the interesting things that I want to point out was Aaron Campbell, there was a media restriction, they weren't allowed to name him, right? So let me ask you something. Luke Mitchell was 14. So he was fucking... <laughs> Maybe I should do a separate video on that. He was 14. And I remember reading all these stories because I was out then and thinking, how are they getting away with fucking naming him like that? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's just fucking mental. But this Aaron Campbell murders a 16-year-old rapes some fucking thing he's and then he's 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 got a restriction on him, know what I mean? But look, Mitchell was named for day one, it's fucked up, know what I mean? How did he how did he how's it what does how what way does the rules work? Um but they lifted the restriction and named him, so fuck you he's gone bad, know what I mean? Hope he rots in fucking hell. Know what I mean? As you do. But um hope you're all having a good Sunday anyway. I'm just gotta go, um get something to eat. Hope you are all well. Um, cheers for all subbing, liking, commenting. Um, I appreciate it. I always try and answer everybody as well. Do you know what I mean? So, um, thanks. Uh, but Jerry Rowett's podcast is on Sean Atwood's channel tonight at seven o'clock. So, you should all watch that if you want to fucking laugh, man. You'll be in stitches at some of the shit he's coming up with, man. It's maybe shit he said on mine as well, but. Um, I'd watch it. It'll be it'll be interesting. So um, uh, you all take care, and I will see you next time I'm on. Have a good evening.